The truth is, is that I haven't always enjoyed my life. And I wouldn't say that I was ever depressed, but there were times in my life where I was just really unfulfilled and I did not look forward to waking up in the morning. And the life that I was living was just not something that I was excited about. And in fact, there were moments where my anxiety was so high, I could barely eat. But now things are different. I've never felt more at peace. And although there might be some tough days here and there, I continuously feel so happy and so grateful that I get to live the life I live. Let me tell you how I got here. Here's how I became happier and created a life I love and how you can too. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I help women step into their power and become their best selves. So if that's something you wanna learn more about, you should absolutely hit that red subscribe button below and join the community. Anyway, let's get into the video. I think something that was the most important thing on this journey towards real happiness and fulfillment was staying true to myself, my dreams, and what I love. You know, what brought me joy, purpose, and passion into my life despite other people's opinions. This is a little silly example, but when I was a kid, all I ever wanted was a dog. And every year when I'd blow out the candles on my birthday cake, I'd wish for the same thing. A dog. I've always been a dog person and although we eventually had a rescue for a short period of time, it's a long story, my doggy dreams never really got fulfilled. It never really came to fruition. So when I was 21, about to graduate college, I already had my job all lined up and everything. I decided I was finally getting that dog. And two weeks after graduating, I picked up my eight week old puppy. And pretty much everyone thought this was a dumb decision and I could totally understand why, you know, I was just starting my career, I should be focusing on that. I had to have the extra expenses of a puppy, which is a lot. I should be focusing on myself and my job, but I wanted this so badly. And Bo, my dog, is one of the best things that ever happened to me and one of the best decisions I ever made. It was something that might not make sense to a lot of people, but it was so important to me. And I'm just happy that I was brave enough to trust that and follow that. And that's just one little example, but there are my 20s I have done things a little bit differently you know I got engaged and got married really young I eventually quit my corporate job and went in a whole other direction I moved across the country even when it didn't even make sense to a lot of people and I made time for the things that I cared about and the things that lit me up when we're a kid we don't really have much say in what happens in our life we're kind of at the mercy of the adults in our life for better or for worse, and life kind of happens to us. But when we become an adult and we start to become more self-sufficient, things change. We're in charge now. It's up to us to create the life we want. It's up to us to create happiness and joy in our life. It doesn't just happen magically. And although that might feel a little overwhelming, it's also exciting. It puts you in the driver's seat. And after 18 years of being conditioned to follow the rules and do as you're told and please your parents, it can sometimes be hard to break out of that but creating a life you love might not mean following the rules all the time it might mean making your own it'll be you deciding what matters and what doesn't and real happiness and peace will come when you remain authentic to who you are and follow your joy and create that life for yourself it won't just show up knocking on your front door you have to make it happen even if it means doing things a little bit differently the next thing that I did to make myself happier was I moved I moved to Tennessee. I changed my environment. Your environment is everything and certain environments will resonate with you and certain environments won't. And I grew up in California and I lived there my whole life. And obviously California is wonderful for so many reasons. They have lovely beaches and sunny weather, but my heart was calling me to go somewhere else, somewhere green with more seasons, with more space, with a lower cost of living. And I have never been to the state of Tennessee, but I pretty much knew I was already moving there before I even visited. And moving somewhere that felt more right to me allowed me to step into who I wanted to be and bring in more of those things that I cared about into my life. You know, you can get a bigger house here, more land, more space. That matters to me. That makes me feel good. I love all of the trees and all of the green. That's super grounding to me. I get to spend lots of time with horses. You know, there's lots of horses out here, lots of farms. I love that. It makes me happy. The environment that you're in can change your energy, but this isn't just the state you live in. This is the people you surround yourself with, the restaurants, and bars and coffee shops and workout studios that you go to. Your environment is everything and you need to find an environment that supports you and lifts you up and makes you feel your best. And that might mean a cross country move or that might mean just finding a different, friendlier workout studio. Remember, you get to choose what's important to you and you get to create the life you want. And your environment plays a part in that. 
Now, the older and older I get, the more I realize that it's the little things that are the big things. You know, the sun on my skin, reading a good book on a rainy day, an evening walk around the neighborhood at sunset, cuddling with my husband or my dogs, seeing my herbs grow, buying fresh flowers, discovering a bird's nest with little baby eggs in them on my patio. I just did that last week. I think we've been conditioned to see these things as mundane or boring, or we take these things for granted, or we think that we can't be happy until we reach that certain goal, or we can't be happy until we go on that crazy three week trip to Italy like we see that girl on Instagram doing and I mean that sounds amazing like sign me up but that's not your day-to-day -day life and if you keep reaching for things saying vacationing in Italy is what's gonna make me happy or getting that next promotion is what's gonna make me happy they might help here and there for sure but that's not your norm that's not your day-to-day -day life so you'll constantly be waiting until that next thing filled with lots of boredom and sadness in between but there are lots of beautiful moments that happen every single day if you can just see them it's kind of like romanticizing your life, making the little things big, making the little things special. When I was able to shift my perspective and my mindset around this kind of stuff, that's when my world started opening up. That's when my upper limits for happiness and joy started expanding. Something that I really struggled with before and something that added a lot of stress and guilt into my life was feeling like I had to do everything, but we can't do everything. That's just not how it works. And being really clear with myself about what my priorities were released a lot of guilt for me about the things that I didn't do. Clear priorities are what allowed me to move in the direction that I wanted to go instead of getting caught up in the little things that didn't really do anything for me. And they made it so I felt like I didn't need to completely over work and deplete myself to feel satisfied at the end of the day. What are your priorities right now at this point in your life? And be honest with yourself and align your actions with these priorities. Anything else can go. This is how you start moving forward and creating the life you want. Let go of that extra unnecessary stress in your life. Now, the next thing that was huge for me on this journey towards happiness and fulfillment was learning how to take care of myself, learning how to nourish myself, and prioritizing my health and well being. It's a lot harder to be happy and enjoy yourself when you feel bad, plain and simple. If any of you know my story, you know I suffered from some health issues several years ago, and it wasn't fun, but through that process, I learned how to take care of myself and give myself discipline when I needed it. And I learned the importance of consistency and investing your time and your energy and sometimes money into myself. And although it was a rough time in my life, I came out much stronger and better for it. I no longer took for granted my healthy body and prioritizing my well-being enabled me so I could live each day to the fullest in the way that I want it. If you feel unhealthy or unwell, whether it's physically or mentally, whatever, it can hold you back. So something about me is that I am very persistent. And if I want something, like I really want something, I will get it. It's not about if, it's about when, because I don't give up and I don't let things deter me. And I think this is a really important quality to have when creating your dream life, because the reality is, is that Things don't happen overnight, it's a process. And being able to not give up and stay the course and believe in yourself is so important. Going from a life I didn't particularly love and enjoy to a life that makes me so happy, it took time. And I mean, I have nothing else to say on this topic. Just keep going and stay the course and believe in yourself. And if you stay focused on that, you will get there. Another reason I was able to become happier and live a life I wanted was by healing from past hurts and not staying stuck there, not staying stuck in the past. I think everyone has some sort of like past trauma or wounds or difficult situations that have left imprints on them, but we don't have to let those past situations define our future. Now to heal from your past, you do have to dive into your past a little bit. That's kind of how it works. But I think that sometimes people will almost use this as an excuse to dwell on their past past and stay stuck in their past and almost stay a victim to their past as opposed to just healing from it and moving on and moving forward. If you're just living in your past all the time, you won't be able to move forward in a way to create the life that you want and your happiness will suffer. And at a certain point, you just have to decide to heal and move on. And I know that always sounds so difficult, but I don't think it has to be. I think that you can choose 
to forgive. You can choose to find peace. You can choose to heal. You can choose to move on. Now, I know it might not always be that simple. You know, I'm a big believer that things like emotions and trauma can get stored in the body. But at the same time, your mind is very powerful. Your thoughts are very powerful. Sometimes you can just choose to accept what happened, find peace with it, forgive, whatever, and move on and not let it dictate your future. Now lastly, let's talk about sunk costs and the sunk cost fallacy because understanding this concept really helped me in my life. So a sunk cost is essentially a cost, whether it's time, energy, money, that you cannot get back. Now what happens is people will invest into something, whether it's time or money, and even if things aren't really working out, things aren't going very well, they'll continue to stay the course because they already put in that much of an investment and they feel like they have to keep going to try to get their investment back. But in reality, a lot of times the best course of action is actually just to scrap it and move on and take the loss. For example, if you went to law school, you paid all that tuition and you started working and you realize that you don't actually like it, but you keep going regardless because you invested all of that time and money into it. Or if you've been dating a guy for a year and it's not really going great, but if you break up now, it would have been a whole waste of a year. And so you decide to just continue the relationship and hope things turn around. Or you continue to watch a movie you don't like because you're already halfway through, you only have an hour left, so you might as well just finish it. It might get good or it might not. Maybe you'll end up dating that guy for another five years until you finally realize that you need to just cut your losses and move on. Or you end up working in law until you're 70 years old and you're extremely unhappy all your life and it never gets any better like you hoped it would. This is the sunk cost fallacy and this is the question of how long do you want to keep going and stay the course to find out if things ever get good. It's not always a bad thing to cut your losses and move on and sometimes it's the best thing you can do for your long-term happiness and fulfillment. And there's a difference between being persistent and not giving up and consciously choosing to let things go that that are no longer for your highest good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share with a friend, comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you did like this video, you might also enjoy this video here, the eight habits that changed my life. So I will see you over there or I will see you in my next video. Bye.